So in case you wondered, you know, you don't need to have a driver's license and you don't need to drive around in a BMW. Mm -hmm. But if you have artists like Abigail Reynolds, you see her right here on the screen. She was like a crazy motorcyclist and she was like so happy that in every country that she went to, you know, she, I think she fell off the bike in Turkey, she got arrested in Egypt. It's like really great stories embedded in her travel. Luckily, she's safe and everything, but she was, of course, freaking out about BMW motorcycles she could, she could ride in. If we can offer help, we help. But if, we, if, we, if nobody needs us, we don't, you know, need to interfere. Um, I know with Samson Young, you know, he, he was so much interested in, the, in, 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 in bells and clocks, and he was, he was so interested in the peacock clock at the Hermitage, you know, the, the great, amazing clock from, what, 19th century, I think, early 19th century, 7th, yeah, um, 18th century. Um, and uh, thanks to our relationship with the Hermitage, we could get Samson Young into the museum when nobody was there, and we had the guy who was running the clock actually turn it on for him. So these little things, you know, can help, and we can make them. Uh, we can make them happen every time uh, that that we can. With Yu Lang, for example, or is it Lang Yu? I always confuse her. Like she's the new artist um, uh, who goes on travel now, as you just said. Um, as you said, she's doing research in robotics and how people move during dances in um, India. And of course, we have been with the Kochi Museum Biennial from the very beginning, and we could tap into our partners at the Kochi Museum Biennial to find actually people um, that were teaching dances that you can only find in this region and they set her up with um, meeting the right people in that region so that is something that we are that's where we feel we can make a difference and can make that those travels even more um, yeah, fruitful when it comes to research maybe um, because I know you have individual interviews also with, with SEC uh, that maybe you can just explain because we're looking right. at art yeah, yeah. Uh, um, maybe you can just uh, you know tell us what this is about yes yeah? sure um, so you see this there's three pieces here uh, in the booth. Um, this is actually one artwork, this pair, kind of pair object. Um, but I'll start with this one here, which is in a sense very similar to, to the one that's on the, on the large wall there. As I kind of traveled, um, I mean actually maybe if I re restart and just say that in doing uh, this project, which was an incredible opportunity, I think my ambition level had the opportunity was really like going super high and I thought what an incredible opportunity I want to do something really big um, and the irony to that I think uh, kind of turned around completely and as I was traveling uh, I found that I was really interested in, in sand which is this, this uh, kind of some of the tiniest micro kind of moments uh, in terms of like our scale or whatever. Um, so as I traveled through the whole journey, what I did was I collected very small samples of sand from each place. And then each of these were kind of documented on the date and the place that uh, they were collected. And then later in my studio in Berlin, I've made these uh, photograms, which many of you probably know, but it, uh, to explain it a little, there's an analog photographic method that you do in a dark room with light sensitive paper, sand, uh, each kind of specific sand sample was poured evenly over a, a light sensitive piece of paper, exposed to the light, and subsequently kind of developed and fixed. Uh, and this is what you see here. So this is a sand photogram of sand from uh, a place near my studio in Berlin. Um, and these are kind of, these are really the originals. So all the white spots are really the shadows or absence of where that sand was on that particular piece of paper. Uh, and they're titled, as I said, according to the place and the, the date from which they were collected. I guess for me this kind of carries a torch in some sense for something like Onkawara's date paintings. But in thinking about sand or in thinking about um, these being documents in some way of, of time. Uh, I think sand really uh, pushes in a whole lot of different directions associatively. So you have kind of uh, maybe like uh, Borges' uh, The Book of Sand, for example. I mean, hourglasses. I mean, sand is always an analogy for time. You have like with an hourglass or erosion or decay. Um, another kind of more implicit context for me, I guess, around the sand that's been used here is of uh, documents of shorelines and inland territories that might be at, uh, under threat in our future. Um, so whether or not they'll still be there or whether or not inland territories might become deserts. Um, there's something kind of speculatively laden into these documents as well. So
So this is the original, and then the large piece you see uh, is a scanned and blown up version of the original size. So this particular one is sand from the Marshall Islands uh, mm. in, Maduro, uh, in a place called Maduro, Maduro Atoll. Yeah. Um, and this is printed at, at 10 times the size of the original. So you really, really get to see the minute and intricate qualities of each grain of sand. And of course, each kind of different sand sample has com completely different qualities. Um, these I'll just say briefly are human anatomical eye models. Um, two identical kind of right eye socket uh, models that are kind of flipped on their side. So if you look at them from this way, they'll make a bit more sense. Um, and then I've replaced the eyeball component with two kinds of different materials that have been uh, yeah, polished and carved into kind of perfect spheres. Uh, one is rainbow obsidian, which is like volcanic lava, uh, volcanic glass basically. Um, and rainbow obsidian in particular uh, is holds these kind of nanorod crystals, which when you shine light on this particular angle, you'll see like these iridescent rings of color inside the rock. Um, this, this piece here is uh, filled with um, multiple uh, fossilized shells from 250 million years ago. So this is fossilized uh, tutorella shells uh, within a jade stone that have been kind of, um, yeah, also polished in edge. Um, that's kind of what I can say. These pieces are called orbits uh, because uh, this particular part of our anatomy is called uh, the orbital bone. Uh, yeah, I, should, I should maybe mention one uh, technical detail, which is um, the artists are not obligated to make work on this journey. So um, no. that, that, that's not a, an expectation. Uh, because the journey is the journey, right. and, mm. and nor are they expected to produce work, let's say, that becomes part of BMW's collection. Uh, but of course it is our fervent hope, and with real artists this is what happens, that when you have these experiences, you end up making this body of work yeah. that, that absorbs the journey and all the things you experience and, and pushes perhaps the practice in a new direction. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is exactly Is this part of BMW AG or the Quan Foundation, the Family Foundation? So is this BMW Corporate is doing this or yeah, the fa no, Family Foundation? BMW has their own collection. Yeah. Went out of Bad Homburg and now they have a, I think they have this great resort in Antisburg. Yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't have to do with the family. Oh, it's this is. The, it's for the brand BMW. This okay. Place. Peter I mean, Samuel with uh, Spartanburg Upstate Times. So, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, so I'm coming They're in from South. There's a lot in culture around Spartanburg. Yeah, I know. There's Spoleto Festival and other things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you know the Spartanburg Up, Upstate Times or the Charleston Chronicle. No, or, you, now you do. The yeah. black newspaper is there. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. The art business brings in the, the, the most yeah. diverse. Co yeah. I guess. Well. I guess we can should conclude here. Yeah. You guys have been standing for quite some time.